Hello and welcome to this Sophos XG Academy webinar where we will be talking about the Sophos XG firewall. My name is Andy Dreyer and I work in the sales engineering team here at Sophos covering both network security and endpoint security products. And in this introductory session, we'll be talking about the benefits of moving to the Sophos XG firewall. We'll talk about the security features it has, the ease of deployment and management, but also how the XG firewall integrates with the wider Sophos portfolio of products to provide the best protection. Now we have 45 minutes set aside for this particular session and we'll start with a quick presentation just introducing the technology before moving on to a technical demonstration. So let's dive straight in. So we'll start the session with a quick high level overview covering the XG features and also the ways in which the XG firewall can be deployed. We'll show how the XG firewall can seamlessly be deployed in an environment where network security appliances already exist, but also how it is a great alternative to those solutions as well. We'll then move on to the SD-WAN capabilities that the product has, showing you how you can seamlessly connect all your sites together using our VPN technology, and also share some useful deployment examples where we've deployed the XG firewall in interesting ways. We'll then move on to the benefits of the XG, talking about the architecture of the solution, the security features it has, um, as well as our synchronized security system, which allows our endpoints and servers protected by Sophos to integrate with the XG firewall directly. And we'll then cover off the central management and reporting capabilities that the firewall has as well. Now, for anyone that's used Sophos products before, you'll know that Sophos's focus is to ensure that managing IT security is made simple and that furthermore, all of our products work together as a single system to provide the best protection. And the XG Firewall is a very big part of that. The XG Firewall, like our other products, can be managed through our central cloud management console called Sophos Central. And you'll see that in the middle of the screen there. Um, and that allows you to manage any Sophos product that you may have. Um, and that includes our endpoint and server technologies, our encryption and mobile solutions, and of course the XG firewall. So if you're already a Sophos customer that is managing those solutions already, very easy to integrate and manage the XG firewall into that same console. But alternatively, if you're a new customer, it's something that you can manage straight away off the bat with Sophos Central. Now, furthermore, over and above managing everything in the same console, our products also work together to provide the best protection. And we call that synchronized security, and it allows the XG firewall to respond to incidents that are taking place in your environment. So for example, an endpoint that is up to date and has a clean bill of health will be telling the XG firewall that it has a green status. And the XG firewall can respond and allow that device to access other sites over the VPN, go out over the internet, or act, access other devices within the infrastructure. But should that endpoint get hit by malware, the endpoint immediately lowers its health status to red. It lets the XG firewall know and the XG firewall can respond. It can prevent that device accessing the internet. It can prevent it hopping from one site to another over the VPN. And it can also let every device running Sophos on the network know that there's a machine with a problem and instruct those devices to reject connections from that machine. And that allows us to uh, instantly respond to that incident by preventing the lateral movement of threats and of course, preventing uh, further spread of that malware around the network. So that's what we call synchronized security and the XG firewall forms a very big part of that system. Now, looking at the features and the deployment options of the XG Firewall, we're very flexible in the way that we can be deployed. First and foremost, you can deploy the XG Firewall as a physical appliance, and we have 15 models within the portfolio for you to choose from to make sure that we are sizing the device in accordance with your exact requirements. But if you are using virtualization within the infrastructure and you would prefer a virtualized approach, you can bring up a virtual appliance of the XG in all of the main hypervisors such as Nutanix, VMware, Hyper-V, um, KVM and Citrix Zen. But should you be an organization that is uh, adopting cloud technologies and moving a lot of your infrastructure to the public cloud, such as Azure or AWS, you can also deploy the XG firewall within those public cloud systems. And we've got great templates to get you off the ground very quickly, bringing those devices up. But regardless of those deployment methods, the features that exist on the product are the same. And you can see that we have a modular based approach on the XG firewall, lots of different modules that provide different areas of IT security. Um, and it's done that way intentionally so that you can pick and choose the modules that are relevant to your requirements. 
So for example, it may be that you're looking solely for a next generation firewall and that your email protection and uh, protection of any web services that you may have is handled by another system. In which case, you can simply purchase the modules relating to those next generation capabilities. In this case, the base license, network protection and web protection. However, if you're solely looking for a web filter because the firewall uh, duties are already um, in, in play with another solution in the infrastructure, you could solely license the web protection module. So it's licensed as such to ensure that flexibility so you can bring the XG firewall in solely as a web filter, solely as an IP, IPS system, or for example, as a fully fledged next generation firewall. But just to quickly run through the features that we have, these will be covered in more detail in later sections, but everything starts on the XG firewall with what we call the base license. That will provide you with core firewalling capabilities, also the ability to do site-to-site -site and remote access VPN. So for all your VPN needs, the base license will cover you to allow you to uh, link all of your remote sites back to your, um, to your XG and also allow remote users to get secure access into the system as well. And we provide both route-based and policy-based VPNs. You'll also see at the bottom there that the wireless um, element is, is in the base module as well. And, and that is our wireless controller that will allow you to manage our wireless access points should you choose to adopt us as a wireless provider as well. Now, moving over to the right hand side, you'll see there's a number of additional modules there. The network protection module provides uh, additions to the perimeter defense, providing things such as intrusion prevention or IPS, basically taking a deeper look at the traffic coming in and out of your network and also allowing you to leverage our synchronized security that I mentioned earlier. Web filtering, as you would expect, allows you to perform uh, web protection for your environment. So this allows you to control what websites your users can and can't go to, warn them against going to such sites if you wanted to, and of course, providing great HTTPS scanning to ensure that we are vetting all of the traffic coming down from those websites. And we also have great application control capabilities to be able to identify all kinds of apps, including anonymizing VPNs and all of those kind of things. So you have full control of those applications. You'll also see we have an email protection uh, module as well to allow you to uh, prevent uh, spam and malware coming in and out of the organization via email, and also the ability to protect web servers on the right hand side there with our web server protection module, where we can act as a reverse proxy sitting in front of your web services to make sure that only legitimate and sanitized connections can get through to your protected websites. So as mentioned, they're all features that you can use um, on the XG, either individual modules or all together. Now, when we look at the ways in which we can deploy the XG, we can deploy the XG as a replacement to your current firewall. So in place of what you currently have, the XG would uh, perform those features and we would sit at the perimeter of your network between your devices and the internet, providing any of those features that you saw on the previous slide, such as web filtering, email filtering, network protection and IPS, and of course, core firewalling. But if you already have a existing third party firewall within the infrastructure, the XG can be transparently dropped into that infrastructure in line to ensure that we are providing extra layers of protection. Now we can do that as a extra firewall, so a, a tier two firewall. So in essence, there's uh, there's two firewalls that traffic needs to go to to get, get into the uh, infrastructure. Um, alternatively, we can sit transparently between your core switch and your existing firewall, just adding extra capabilities that your existing firewall may not be able to provide. For example, web filtering or IPS. And the advantage of that is because we're dropping in transparently, there's no readdressing needed. Essentially all traffic that would be passing through your existing firewall will pass through us first on its way out to the internet and just ensures those additional layers of protection should you need them. Uh, and then finally, another thing to mention here is where your existing firewall is, is providing your, your firewalling capabilities. But for things like web traffic, you might want an explicit proxy on the network to send your web traffic off to to be vetted before it goes to the outside world. And here you can see we're set up in an explicit proxy mode. We're to the side of the existing firewall, vetting all the web traffic and passing that on to the existing firewall. So hopefully what you can see here is whether we're in line, whether we're off to the side of the network, whether we're a replacement for your existing firewall solution, the XG is a great and flexible solution that can be deployed within your infrastructure. 
Now, of course, lots of organizations have a whole number of offices that are distributed either around the world or around the country, um, all of which require um, network security capabilities. So the XG firewall forms part of this SD-WAN solution very well. So in this scenario, you can see that all of these different offices have an XG firewall deployed, providing network security services to those individual sites. And using the XG firewall, you can ensure that all of those XG firewalls can create VPN connections to each other. And that happens over the internet. So it means that every single XG firewall within the environment has connectivity to all of the other XG firewalls within the infrastructure. And that can be created directly on the XG firewall or through Sophos Central to make sure all of those VPN links are established and, uh, and, and are brought up. And furthermore, if you have smaller sites that don't have such a large infrastructure, you can deploy our SD Red technology. And our SD Reds, the best way to explain them is they are our remote ethernet devices and they're small plug and play VPN boxes that you can deploy to your smaller remote sites. They automatically establish a layer two VPN back to your HQ XG firewall. And it means that those networks simply act as an extension of the networks on that central site. It's literally as if those sites are directly connected to your XG. And it means whether you've got a large infrastructure and you need a large XG, or if you've got a smaller infrastructure at a remote site and just simply need a VPN connection back to HQ, you've got the ability to do that and you can bring that management all into the XG and into Sophos Central. And of course, if you are using our endpoint technologies in tandem with the XG firewall, you are able to leverage that synchronized security system I was talking about earlier. And what that means is that any endpoints that are sat behind the XG firewall at any of your sites um, they will be uh, sharing their health status with their local XG firewall. And that means that should a certain device uh, get hit by malware, the XG firewall is instantly notified and may choose to prevent that device from connecting to other uh, devices via the VPN or other sites via the VPN using the XG firewall. So that synchronized security is very useful to obviously restrict that particular device accessing areas of the local network, but also hopping over the VPN to other sites as well. Um, now, at this point, I just wanted to share a recent deployment example, how a customer of ours recently deployed the XG to their site. And this specific customer was a car dealership that were based all around the United Kingdom. And naturally, with car dealerships, they have lots of showrooms uh, all over the place that all need security. But also need uh, connectivity to central resources. So in this scenario, this organization had a central data center and all of their remote sites around the UK were connected via MPLS up to that data center. So what we did is they wanted uh, security, uh, network security at each of their individual sites. They wanted things like web filtering. They wanted things like IPS, but they also wanted redundancy. They didn't want to be in a situation where one of their links, such as the MPLS link, goes down and they were suddenly in a position where they couldn't access their central resources. So in this scenario, we deployed XG firewalls to each of their showrooms and those were uh, connected up so that they had access via MPLS back to that central data center. But what we also did on these XG devices was put redundancy in place. So if that MPLS link going back to their data center went down for whatever reason, the XG firewall could instantly establish a new VPN directly to the data center over another internet link that they had within all of their uh, different showrooms. Um, now, further to this, they were so worried about redundancy that if that internet connection went down for whatever reason, they wanted to fail over again. So in this scenario, we uh, implemented uh, 4G uh, connectivity in each of those sites and VPNs running over those. And what that meant was that there is great redundancy in all of these showrooms. If their MPLS link goes down, those XG firewalls can fail over to another internet link that those showrooms have. And if that internet link fails in turn, we can then bring up a 4G VPN connection into their data center. So there was great redundancy, great SD-WAN capabilities that were utilized as part of this project. And just to show how flexible the XG firewall is, that firewall that's in their data center wasn't actually a Sophos firewall, it was a third party. So it shows our abilities not only to communicate with our own solutions, 
but also to communicate with um, other third party solutions as well. Now, at this point, we will move on to the benefits of the XG firewall. Why do we believe that the XG firewall is a great solution for any network infrastructure? Well, it's worth starting with the architecture that sits under the bonnet on the XG firewall. Um, and we utilize what we call the extreme high performance architecture on the XG firewall. And the best way to think about this is the XG firewall essentially making sure that we are not performing checks on traffic that we don't need to and making sure that that traffic passes through the XG firewall as quickly as possible. And I have a couple of diagrams here to explain exactly how this works. And you'll see in front of you here in the top left hand corner, you have what we call the firewall stack, which is the part of the firewall that works out the connection information, what the traffic is, all of those bits and pieces and where it needs to send it. You'll also see we have what we call the DPI engine, which is the deep packet inspection engine. And that's where we do all of our scanning capabilities, IPS, web filtering, antivirus, all of those, those bits and pieces. And at the bottom, you'll see the network fast path, which is uh, seen as our kind of express route through the system, the fastest way of getting traffic through the XG. Now, in this first example that I'll show you here, we can see that traffic is uh, firstly going to the firewall stack. The firewall stack is seeing this stream of traffic and it's looking at this and it's making decisions as to what it needs to do. And what it's doing here is it's making an intelligent decision to say, I've seen enough of this traffic now. I know what it is. I know where it's coming from, where it's going to. And I've made the decision that all of the traffic related to, uh, to this packet stream um, is, is trusted. I'm happy with this. And you'll see that it offloads it at the bottom there to fast path. It's saying, well, you don't have to go through all of these other um, uh, security mechanisms on the on the XG firewall. Um, now, if we look at another um, another option here or another um, uh, example in this scenario, traffic again is being processed by the firewall stack. And in this scenario, the firewall stack has said, right, well, we do need further checking of this traffic. We need to send that on to the DPI engine uh, for further checking. Maybe it's web traffic, maybe it's application traffic that needs IPS checking, but we're running that through there. Once the DPI engine has, uh, has processed that traffic, it's going to pass that back to the firewall stack and back to FastPath to send that through as quickly as it can through the system. Now, when you look at that, you might say, well, that's actually being processed by lots of traffic. And also that traffic is going from the firewall stack to the DPI engine back to the firewall stack and into FastPath. Is that actually that efficient? So what you're seeing here only represents a small amount of what the XG will do. This will this will only relate to a small amount of the traffic that the XG sees. What we will be doing most commonly to make this a far faster system is actually to say, well, the firewall stack doesn't need to be involved. The firewall stack has said this traffic, this stream of packets, I'm happy with it. I don't need to do any more on the connection side with that. So you'll see that it completely offloads it to FastPath and that FastPath just dips into DPI and to the DPI engine just to check the elements that it needs. So we're uh, completely bypassing the firewall stack now. And that just means that that firewall stack is freed up to scan other traffic and process other traffic. But what we will do, of course, is get to a point where we're happy with what the traffic is. So in this last example here, you can see that traffic is passing directly through FastPath. And this represents where traffic has hit the XG firewall. We've trusted it. We're happy with where it's coming from and how we need to route it. The DPI engine has done what it needs to do to ensure that this is trusted traffic and everything has been offloaded to FastPath. And we have signatures that will offload to FastPath to say, well, if this traffic is coming from a trusted source, maybe Microsoft updates or maybe Netflix, and we've done our initial checks, we can completely offload that to FastPath. So it's worth mentioning Xtreme simply because it is going to provide so many performance gains to your organization to make sure that uh, traffic is dealt with as quickly as possible and it's not being checked by elements that don't need to check it.
Now this leads me on very nicely to uh, some other great benefits of the XG firewall and what really um, brings us above our competitors. Um, now HTTPS scanning, as I'm sure you're aware, HTTPS is used very heavily. HTTPS um, relates to 80% of web traffic. Sites that you are accessing, such as banking sites, webmail sites, news sites, they're all now HTTPS to ensure that that traffic is secured. But of course, Whilst lots of legitimate establishments are using HTTPS, lots of cyber criminals are using it as well. And 32% of the malware and call home traffic, PUA traffic that we've seen is related to HTTPS traffic. So hackers are exploiting it as much as uh, you know, legitimate businesses are using it. So of course, we need to be in a position to be able to scan that HTTPS traffic, to make sure those sites your users are going to and that they're downloading content from, making sure that that content is secure and that it isn't malicious. Um, but what's disturbing is that 96% of organizations don't turn HTTPS on. And that was a third party study of, uh, of companies using all manner of uh, solutions. And of course, it means that you're missing a lot of traffic. Uh, any any traffic that's coming from down from a HTTPS site, which of course is 80% of the web, it means that that isn't being scanned. So it's very important that whatever solution you put in place, that HTTPS scanning is enabled um, and that it is effective at doing its job. And the XG firewall is very, very good at HTTPS. Firstly, it allows you to create very, very granular policies. So a lot of the reasons that people would turn HTTPS scanning off is that, you know, web users are trying to go to websites and they found that they can't get through for whatever reason. So what we can do in our system is say, well, we can be granular with our policies. We can say what websites will have HTTPS scanning enabled, what category of websites, what users will have it enabled, what source networks will have it enabled, what destination networks will have it enabled, and what applications. So you can really tune into where you do and where you don't enable HTTPS scanning. Further to that, you can also specify in the policy how you want our system to behave if it encounters a common HTTPS difficulty. And when we talk about HTTPS difficulties, we mean things like unsupported ciphers, all of those kind of things. And you can actually specify uh, if we encounter that particular issue, uh, do we want to uh, just simply allow that content through and say, we've scanned what we can, we'll just let this through? Or in fact, do you want us to completely stop and, uh, and, and prevent access to that site? You've got control over that to instantly say what happens in that event. And all of these things combined make the HTTP scanning system so much more usable and of course will prevent you from turning it uh, will prevent you from wanting to turn it off but should you encounter a HTTPS problem straight away on the dashboard of the XG firewall you'll be able to see a breakdown of what we can scan what we can't scan and give you the ability to immediately respond to errors so if we are having problems with certain content you don't have to trawl through log files you can instantly see what uh, uh, web resources are having problems and you can choose immediately to fix and exclude those particular areas from scanning should you want to Okay, so we'll now move on to the management and reporting capabilities within Sophos Central. Like I mentioned earlier, all of the XG firewalls that you deploy can be managed through Sophos Central. Um, and that means that if you've got lots and lots of devices, you can bring them into groups and manage them in bulk. And as you can see in this screenshot here, I've actually got two XG firewalls deployed. They're in a group called on-site deployments. And if I need to send a configuration to both of those at the same time, I can do that very easily. I can create network objects. I can create uh, web exceptions, all of those kind of things, and send them down to all of those devices at the same time without having to individually visit all of those devices. And what's great, as you'll see in the screenshot there as well, is we'll give you an insight to whether there's any concerns surrounding those devices, or, you know, what version they're running, if there's any, any problems or alerts that you need to be aware of. But if you need to jump on one of those XG firewalls directly, you can do so immediately by just clicking the relevant firewall in the link. So you've always got the ability to uh, configure them and have visibility of those XGs as a whole in Sophos Central, but you also have the ability to click directly into them as well. 
Um, and worth mentioning also that because all of these devices are managed in Sophos Central, they can also report information directly to Sophos Central as well. So from all of your managed XG devices, you can get comprehensive web reports, network reports, that network usage, VPN, all of those bits and pieces directly into the same console. And I mentioned earlier that Sophos Central is used to manage all of our Sophos products. And one of the great things there is that we have a unified dashboard. And it means that if you're using multiple Sophos products, the alert dashboard will be showing you alerts from all of your products, whether that's the XG firewall, whether it's the endpoints. And should you be in a position where you want to deploy more XG firewalls to your infrastructure, very easy to do. There are quick provisioning options within the XG to add new devices via serial number. Um, and what that in turn allows you to do is build a quick configuration that you can put on a USB stick, plugged into that XG and send it directly out to site. And that means that when that device is plugged in, it uses that config to instantly provision that device and get it connected to Sophos Central um, and allows you to administer it straight away as a result. So what we've done there is we've had a look at the XG firewall. We've talked about the features that it has, why we believe it is a great network security solution for a network infrastructure. What we'll now go on to is a demonstration of the product. So in front of you, you'll now see the Sophos Central dashboard. And as mentioned earlier, Sophos Central is the cloud management console that you can use to manage any Sophos product that you may have. And to that end, on the left hand side, you will see all of the different solutions that I am currently licensed for as a sales engineer. And you'll see endpoint protection in there, server protection and mobile. But just at the bottom, you will see firewall management as well. And I'm going to click into that. And this is going to take me to a dedicated firewall management dashboard where I can instantly see the security posture of my deployed firewalls. This is going to tell me if I've got any alerts I need to be aware of on my firewalls, whether I've had any intrusion attacks, and also what the web activity has looked like on these devices. And when I move over to the right hand side, I can see that I currently have two devices deployed and that are managed within Sophos Central. So I'm going to click into those. And you can see those on the right hand side. Uh, one machine is called XG Branch, the other is called XG. And I've grouped those two XG devices into a group called on site deployments. And that's so I can configure those in bulk. Um, and if I want to do that, very easy to do so. I can select this option on the right hand side and select manage policy. And this allows me to configure both of those XG firewalls at the same time. And it's by no means limited to two at a time. There could be 10 devices in that group. And you can configure those in bulk to prevent any duplication of effort. And you'll see that I can configure things like firewall rules, NAT rules, SSL inspection rules, as well as many other things. But I'm going to go to hosts and services here on the left hand side um, and just create a new network object that I'm going to push down to all of those devices. So I can select add here and I can call this my new network uh, object. And let's just say that this is a new network from a new branch office that all my XG firewalls need to know about. So I can put the uh, address of the network in here. Let's just say that's 10.10.60.0 and click save. And that will now be pushed down to both of the firewalls that are in that group. So that bulk management really does help that administrative uh, process for the XG firewalls. Now, jumping back to the Sophos Central um, firewall management view again, I can also centrally control reports within, within Sophos Central as well. So if I select report generator here on the left hand side, I have the ability to generate reports for any of my managed Sophos XG firewalls. So I can select them from the list in here. I can select on site deployments and select my um, particular XG firewall that I want to run reports on. And you'll see instantly it starts generating reports for that particular firewall. And in this scenario, it's showing me a bandwidth usage report, showing me what uh, applications have been using what bandwidth. But it's by no means limited to that. You'll see that there's lots of different reporting options. One that's commonly used by our customers is web usage. And this gives me an insight to how the web is being used in my different firewalls and my different sites. And I can adapt these um, web um, reports to include more information. So as opposed to just telling me the category and the, the domain, I can bring in information such as the timestamp, the, the user, and bring that into the report as well to give me more granular reports about what my users have been doing.
And furthermore, if I wanted to look at exactly what a specific user had done within the environment, I can click on that specific user and generate that report. And that will show immediately within Sophos Central as well. Now that information is exportable. You can export that out of the system if you want to, but it just shows how you can uh, run reports on all of your XG firewalls that you have managed within Sophos Central. Now, at this point, I'm going to jump out of central management and actually configure an XG firewall itself. And to do that, I just need to click the actual XG firewall that I want to administer. So I'm going to select this one in the list on the right hand side. I'm going to select XG and that is going to log me on locally to that XG firewall through Sophos Central. So whilst I can configure things in bulk, I can also jump onto each individual XG firewall to configure them further if I needed to. And that's exactly what I've done here. So I'm now logged on to one of my individual XG firewalls. And you can see it takes me through to a dashboard called the Control Center, which is giving me an insight to what this XG firewall is up to, what state is it in, what has it been seeing. Um, and just to show you um, some of the information on this dashboard, if I jump over to the left hand side, you can see I've got the system health. So this is telling me that the performance of the device is green and that the performance is okay. I can see the services are up and running, they're all fine and the VPNs are up and running as well. But you'll notice I've got an amber mark next to interfaces, which suggests something is wrong there. So I can click into my interfaces view and this will give me more information surrounding these interfaces. Now, the first thing is at the bottom, you can see that my uh, internet link is up. So that's that's the good news. Um, but you can see when we look at the other interfaces that it's telling me that one of my interfaces is unplugged. And that's why that's showing as amber. So it's just giving me that insight to problems I might have on this device. Now, when we move into the middle of the screen, we have what we call the traffic insights. This is designed to tell you what the XG firewall is up to. So it's telling you what uh, traffic it's seeing, what application traffic um, is being seen, what web categories my users are going to, and whether we've seen any attacks. And I can see at the top there that it's uh, telling me the most common application categories. We've got some streaming media that my users are using. A little bit further down, we can see the most common web categories my users have been accessing. And you can see we've got things like online shopping and news in there. And if I want to see more surrounding that, I can simply click into it and I can see more information surrounding that, uh, that particular usage, the URLs the users have been going to, the users involved and what time they've been going to those sites as well. So that again is all accessible from the dashboard. Now, furthermore, on the dashboard, we'll give you an insight to any network attacks that we've stopped and also any applications that we may have blocked as well. So all of that information is available to you on the dashboard so you can see that straight away. But another area that I'm going to quickly draw your attention to is the cloud application discovery that you'll see at the top here. And this is giving us an insight to what cloud applications my users are using. So when we talk about cloud applications, we're specifically talking about cloud apps where data could be shared with. So for example, your users could be sharing data to those cloud application platforms. And if I click into this, we can see a little bit more information. So if I go to all classifications, and I put the, uh, the date range back um, a little bit. I can see in here all of the different cloud apps my users have been going to in this date range. And I can see common ones like Office 365, SharePoint, OneDrive in there. Um, and clicking into those, I can see which users have used those apps, how much data they've uploaded, how much data they've downloaded. Now, it might be that those particular applications are sanctioned for use within your environment, and that's absolutely fine. But what this gives you insight to is whether there's any applications that you don't want your users to be using and how much data they've been uploading to those platforms. And that might warrant you to have a chat with those users to say, look, stop using OneDrive. You should be using Dropbox or vice versa. Um, but it might also uh, mean that you want to block those applications now that they've been shown to you. And you have the full capability to do that on the XG firewall to block those apps. Um, so that is the cloud application discovery. 
Now, just moving over to the right hand side of the dashboard, you'll see we have what we call the user and device insights. And I mentioned earlier that we have what we call synchronized security here at Sophos, which allows our endpoints and servers protected by Sophos to integrate and communicate directly with the XG firewall and share their, their uh, health status. And that's exactly what's happening here on the right hand side. You can see this is telling me I've got three devices currently sat behind the XG firewall that have Sophos installed. And they're telling the XG firewall that they are in a green status. So there's nothing wrong with those. They are they're perfectly uh, healthy and they're of no concern to me as an administrator. And that means those devices should be getting access to the Internet, access over the VPN and do what they need to do. But if I jump over to one of those machines, if I just um, jump in here, and this machine here is one of those three machines, you'll notice if I log on to this machine, if I try and get out to the web, that I should be able to. So go to bbc.co.uk and I can see the latest news. But what I'm going to do now is actually navigate to a site that's going to attempt to infect this machine. And it's just a testing website that we use here at Sophos. Um, but I'm going to select this call home option, which simulates this machine going to a malicious site where malware has tried to be downloaded. And if I click that, you'll see instantly that Sophos jumps in in the bottom right hand corner saying I've detected malware and the health status of this machine has been lowered. And if I jump back to my XG firewall, you'll see that instantly instead of having two devices or sorry, three devices uh, green and connected, I now only have two. And it's telling me that the other device is at risk. So instantly that endpoint has told the XG firewall that it's had a status change and that allows the XG firewall to respond to that incident. And we can see what the machine is. It's called Win10Ben. We can see the IP address and the user Ben Benson and that it happened 26 or 27 seconds ago. Now, if I go back to this machine and then try and access bbc.co.uk again, you'll notice that instead of allowing me access through to bbc.co.uk, it now says that internet access is blocked. And the reason for that is that this device no longer meets the security heartbeat requirements for the network. So because that has a red health status, it no longer has the correct uh, level it needs to get out to the internet and the XG is blocking that. And that shows just one of the examples of how the XG can prevent this device doing any harm if indeed it is infected. Now, what I'm going to do now is just jump over to this rules and policies section and just show how easy the XG firewall is to configure. So I'll select rules and policies here. And you'll see here that I can configure all manner of rules, things like natting rules, SSL rules. I'm going to keep it simple for this demonstration and just select add firewall rule here. And this could just be a brand new firewall rule for my organization on this XG firewall. And I could call this new outbound access. And I can start to build this firewall rule to say, where is the traffic coming from? Well, it's coming from my local network. And I can specify the specific networks that I want to allow out um, if, I, uh, if, if I want to. So uh, let's just uh, add a new network in here and say anything that's on my HQ network, I want uh, this to be allowed out. And let's just say that's 10.10.10.0. So at this point, I am just creating a simple firewall rule and I'm saying, well, anything that's coming from the HQ network that's going out to the Internet, I want to allow that as long as it's these specific protocols. And I'll, I'll just select HTTP and HTTPS there. So I'm allowing web traffic out to the Internet from this HQ network that I've created. Now, instead of having to jump from one screen to another to bring in further security checks, you'll see that we bring that all into this same configuration pane. So if I wanted to, I could create a specific network address translation rule specifically for this firewall rule if I wanted to. And I've got that create linked NAT rule there. But I actually want to harden this rule. I want to go one step further and actually bring in web filtering here as well. So I can select this web filtering option. I can go in here and I can select the um, uh, web filtering policy I want to apply. Now, there's plenty of templates in there. For example, no ads or explicit content is one of the ones that's used regularly. But you can always create your own to apply different policies to different sets of users. But I'll just keep it simple and select no games, ads or explicit content. 
So that's going to actively prevent my users going to bad websites. Furthermore, I can say that I want to scan HTTP and HTTPS um, traffic that's coming down from websites my users are visiting. So by just a tick of a box, I can bring that in. And from doing that, it means that I've hardened this firewall rule from not just being a firewall rule, it's now doing um, web filtering as well. And a little bit further down the screen, you'll see that there's more security options that I can bring in here. I can choose to bring in IPS um, checking. And again, whilst you can create your own comprehensive IPS rules, I'm just going to use a predefined template, nice and easy to get this rule configured nice and quickly. And by selecting LAN to WAN, I now have a tuned IPS policy um, assigned to this firewall rule, now doing IPS checks as well. And to push that one step further, I might want to say that I want to block specific applications um, that are high risk. And again, I can use one of Sophos's templates to say I will block any high risk applications. So very quickly there, we've got a firewall rule that's been built with web filtering enabled, application control enabled and IPS enabled. And the last thing that I'll just mention here is how you can bring the status of your endpoints into this. I can say my endpoints must have a green health status in order to use this firewall rule. Now, I've now configured that firewall rule and I'll click save and you'll see I now have that firewall rule in play in my XG firewall, actively protecting my network from threats. So you can see how easy the XG is to configure. Now, the last thing that I'm just going to show on this demonstration is just to touch on how comprehensive the SSL and HTTPS inspection is. And to do that, I can create an SSL TLS inspection rule here in the top right hand corner. So I've now gone up to this section and you'll see there's a few in there already, but I'm going to add a new one. And if you remember earlier in the session, I was talking about how a lot of organizations turn HTTPS scanning off simply because it's a burden to their infrastructure. It either causes them low resources or furthermore, um, prevents them from accessing certain websites. As you saw earlier, we use the Xtreme architecture to make sure that firstly, the, we are very light on resources, but furthermore, give you the ability to create very granular HTTPS policies to say what we can do for HTTPS when we do scan, when we don't. So I'm gonna create a new HTTPS policy for my environment here. And this is where I can really drill in and basically say, well, what do I want to do here? Who do I want to enable HTTPS scanning for? So it might be that I want to do it for anyone on, on the LAN, on the local area networks. I may use that same HQ network that uh, I created earlier. And we're saying, well, we're only gonna do HTTPS inspection for this network. Now you can also specify users that you might want to, or users or groups that you might want to enable HTTPS scanning for. I'll just put a few Active Directory groups in there as well. And you'll see that I can also use things like categories and websites. So if I go in here, it might be that I only want to enable HTTPS for certain types of websites. And I'm just going to pick some at random here um, to uh, enable these. But the result of this is we are only doing HTTPS scanning for certain users and for certain websites. And that is completely controllable by you. But to push this one step further, what we can also do is apply a decryption profile and say, well, if we encounter an issue, what do we want to do? You know, if we find one of these common HTTPS problems on a site, do you want us to allow access through undecrypted or do you just want us to stop in our track straight away? And you'll see there's some predefined uh, profiles you can use there, such as maximum compatibility. But just to show how this looks, if I create a new profile here, you can see all of the different options you have. Now, I won't go through these in much detail because they'll be covered in later sessions, but I can go in here straight away and select the different options for those common SSL or HTTPS misgivings and show exactly how we will behave in those scenarios. So I'll just click save to that. That's now applied and I've got my brand new HTTPS policy in place. Um, that's going to be enforced on my users. So that shows how easy that HTTPS scanning is. Okay, so we've now seen how you can create that HTTPS policy for your environment and uh, apply that immediately to your users. 
And that brings us to the end of today's demonstration and the end of today's webinar. Hopefully you'll have seen the great features that we have in the XG Firewall, how that can be deployed seamlessly amongst network security solutions you might already have in place or as a replacement for those. And you've seen the great central management capabilities and ease of configuration that the XG Firewall provides. There are further XG Academy sessions taking place over the coming days, so please look out for those. But in the meantime, thank you very much for listening and please stay secure.